today I'm going to be starting a new game maker tutorial series on how to make a developer console for your game in game maker. This is fairly simple and today we're just going to be talking about setup which is fairly straightforward. So first we just need to create a few assets. The first one's going to be an object and this is going to be our main developer console. So we're just going to name that OBJ console. You're going to need a font um, or you can just use the default font but I'm gonna be using a font and I'm gonna go ahead and just call this the console font and we'll give it standard of consolas and bump up the font size a little bit all right and make sure you have a room and we'll actually go ahead and put console in there so we don't forget about it okay so first let's get started on some variables so it's just the console variables and we're gonna have some core variables that we're gonna initialize the first one's gonna be our enable so whether or not you want to enable the console and we'll just set this as true to start so that you can see it you're gonna need an enable key so that you can uh, enable the console and we're just gonna make this the F F1 key so it's nice and simple we're going to have our text variable, and that's just going to be empty for now. And then we're going to have our defining text variable, and you can make this pretty much whatever you want, but I'm just going to do that. But make sure there are three characters, or keep track of how many characters are in your text defining variable, because we are going to be using that later on to define our commands. So then we need an array for our text uh, variable that we can store all of our commands in or the recent commands we've used. And then we just need current line variable. So the current text that we are typing and that's gonna be equal to our text def. So that whenever you first start this up, this is gonna be printed on the console line. And then we need an erase variable for erasing the keys and that's just going to equal negative one for now. So now we're going to set up our line cursor. So this is your cursor variables and you can set the cursor to be whatever you want. I'm just going to make it the standard. Then you need a cursor delay for how fast you want this to blink and I'm just going to set that as 15. And then you'll need to set an alarm to keep track of that and blink it. And then before we forget, let's go in that alarm one. And this is going to be our cursor blink. And all we're going to put in here is if the cursor equals what it's supposed to equal, then we're just going to make it change it to be nothing, just an empty string. And then we're going to say else, and we'll say cursor equals the default again. And then we just need to reset this alarm so that it continues to do this. Okay, so that is our cursor blink. And just a few more variables here, and these are all for styling. So first we're going to have our font variable and that's what we created as the FNT console and then we're going to need a horizontal size for our console and that's going to be the size of the window, size of the window width and then we're also going to have a vertical size and you can set this to be whatever you want. I'm going to do 360. So now a few variables we'll have. You need a text background color Okay 
So here's the variables that you'll have to have laid out or you can name them whenever you want or not put these variables in. This just makes it easy so that later on restyling your developer console is easier on you. It's much simpler just going into the create event, changing these variables, than going all through the code and changing all of your values manually. And then another thing we're going to have to have is a script for logging uh, text to the console, which that's kind of a needed thing. So we're going to go ahead and just name this script log. And you're going to be logging what you want to print. So inside this script here, you need to check and see first if our command console even exists. So if instance does not exist, and then our console, then we're just going to exit this whole script if our console does not exist. But if it does exist, then with our console, so we're going to change these values with the console. And we're just going to log the text and scroll the text array because you're going to want to see the most recent text popping up uh, continuously. So we're going to create a quick for loop here and we're just going to say if variable i is equal to the array length of um, our text that we had text array and we're going to say minus one because we want to get uh, one value inward and then we're going to say i is greater than or equal to zero and i minus minus because we want to read this array in reverse to get the most recent um, values and then we're just going to say that our text array i plus one equals our text array i. So it's going to get the most recent text and put it on top. And then down here we just have to log what we want into the console and to do that we just set text 0 to equal our string of the argument we put in which is print. And then you just want to set the current line again to equal the text def. Just reset everything. So Got an underscore there. Okay, so now whenever we go ahead and call this uh, function here and we put a string in for print, uh, it'll go ahead and print that to the console as well as the command. Okay, so that should be about it for part one. The next tutorial I'm going to have is going to be all about command handling, and then the third tutorial is going to be adding your own custom scripts and styling. So stay tuned for those and be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.